I am definitely not perfect when it comes to free motion quilting, but I have been practicing a lot more lately. Through all of the practice I have been doing, I have discovered a few tips that have improved each of my free motion projects a little bit each time. So since I have found all of these little tips really helpful, I'm going to share them with you today. My first tip is to set up for success. I am the type of person who really likes to just jump right into a project. I like to get started. I don't like to fuss with all of the extras. And sometimes that is fine, but sometimes it really doesn't help me get a project finished the way I would like. So for me, when I decide I'm going to free motion and practice doing a quilt free motion, I make sure I do a few things to set up for success. And while they're not fun sometimes, it is important. So the first thing I always do is clean out my machine. I don't do this as often as I should. And it's actually great that I've been practicing free motion quilting because I have it in my mind that to do this well, I need my machine to be running well. So I always clean it out. The next thing I always do, I honestly am not great at either, and I should be doing this more often, but I always change my needle. I, I put a new needle in my machine, and I feel like that really helps to make sure that the needle is nice and sharp and I get nice even stitches. The next thing I do is I fill up my bobbin with whatever thread I'm going to be using on the project that I'm working on. This is because when I get in a flow and get things moving really well, I don't want to have to stop and fill up a bobbin. I feel like that kind of gets me out of a groove that I'm in. So being able to pop a new bobbin in right away, I find to be very helpful. The next few things I do to set up for success is to remember to lower the feed dogs on the machine. I also make sure that I have the correct foot for my machine put in. So it's a free motion quilting foot that I have. And then I also lower the speed on my machine. I feel like I need to sew a little bit slower than I normally do when I free motion quilt to get some nice even stitches. So lowering the speed of the machine really helps me stay consistent. The next thing I highly recommend is getting some gloves with grips on them. So I have two different pairs. I'm going to show you the first one I started with. These are called grab a ruse and while they worked really nice, they were a little bit baggy on my hands and they did not feel comfortable. These are gloves that are meant for free motion quilting for quilting on a domestic uh, and they are a quilty notion. So bear with me here. The pair that I really, really love are these Gorilla Grip Tracks. These fit my hand so much better. They feel much more comfortable on and they're actually from a hardware store. So not really meant for free motion quilting, but I feel like they work a lot better for me. They're covered in grips rather than the grab that just have grips on the fingertips. Now, does that mean these are the best ones that they'll work best for you? I honestly don't know. We're all going to like different things. I just wanted to show these to you to suggest if you're not liking the gloves that you have that are designed for free motion quilting, maybe try something else. Now, another thing I like to point out about these gloves, so not only do they fit me a lot better, but they also come in a lot of different sizes. So I feel like if you are a person who has larger hands, you might be able to find a pair at a hardware store that fit you better. Now that everything is all set up, I want to show you the project I'm going to be working on for this video. So here's my project and do you notice anything about it? Aside from it being absolutely adorable. <laughs> It really just brings me to my second tip, and that is to choose the right project to free motion quilt on that matches your ability. So this is pretty small. It's a table runner or a long wall hanging style quilt, and it is perfect for me to work on and improve my skills for free motion quilting because it is smaller and it kind of builds my confidence more too to stay within my comfort and ability when I'm free motion quilting. So you may have also noticed something else on this project and that is that there are pins on it and 
Instead of using spray base, which you may have seen me use a lot in the past, I choose to pin baste now when I'm free motion quilting. So that brings me to my next tip here, and that is to pin baste if you have noticed that your needle gets really gummed up if you are free motion quilting a quilt that you have spray basted. So what I started to notice was that a lot of the skip stitches I was getting and a lot of the um, kind of uneven stitches looked like they were coming because of my needle getting really sticky from the spray base that I use. So once I started going back to pin basting when I'm free motion quilting, things went a lot more smoother for me. So maybe try pin basting your next project that you want a free motion quilt on if you've maybe been spray basting in the past. Now my fourth tip for you today is to practice on a small scrap of fabric that you have set up just like you do the projects you're gonna work on. So yeah, I have a backing, I have batting, and I have the top layer of fabric. Set it up and just practice a little bit before you jump in on your project. And I suggest doing this because you probably don't free motion quilt every single day. At least I don't. If you do, then you may not need to do this. But I feel like it's really easy to get out of the feeling that you get when you free motion quilt. The movement, the speed, all of those things are kind of ingrained in you when you start doing it. But when you're out of practice for a little bit, that feeling kind of gets lost. So practice a little bit, get comfortable before you jump into your project. So a few things that I noticed when I was practicing was that when I was sitting way too far away from the machine to where I felt comfortable, but it felt kind of awkward to think about moving. So I got to a, a stopping point where I knew I had to, to take out a needle anyway, and then I moved forward a little bit. So I'm going to see if that position feels better for me. I'm also looking to see what direction I'm going because I already forgot. All right, so I'm happy with how everything looks, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my actual quilt. All right, so my last tip for you today was the hardest for me to figure out. And that was moving my hands while I am free motion quilting. I feel like that's kind of the hardest thing to figure out because it's also hard to explain. I'm going to try my best to explain it to you and hopefully you find it really, really helpful. It has been really hard for me to figure out how to get comfortable and where to keep my hands when I'm free motion quilting. I'll get into a position where my hand's getting too close to the needle or it feels like it's getting too far away to control the quilt and I just kind of fumble getting it back into a good place and then my stitches get all wonky, things get messed up. All of that just unravels. And it's so frustrating because I could have been in a really good flow. I'm building my confidence and then all of a sudden my hands fumble everywhere and things get messed up and it can be really discouraging. So I'm gonna try to explain to you what I do the best I can and hopefully it helps you out. So I'm stopped right now and I see a needle coming up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out. It's not really a needle, pin? Safety pin. <laughs> you know what I mean though, right? 
All right, so I'm gonna get going here and I'm gonna kind of talk about where I have my hands. So I have them on either side of the needle area. That's where it feels really comfortable for me. It might end up feeling comfortable for you some in other some other position and that's okay. I'm more gonna talk about when I feel comfortable moving my hands here. So I'm gonna get started going. And if I feel like I need to move one of my hands, like I'm coming up on this one, I can move this one freely because the hand on the other side was holding the quilt in place for me. That's the hand that had all of the force on the quilt on it. So this hand's just kind of a guide. Now this hand is a free hand and the other hand is holding more of the quilt and guiding it. So I really base my hand movements on the hand that is holding the quilt firm the most. So I'm gonna show you again. And it's really hard to, to really show the movement. It's kind of a feeling that I feel like you're going to get the more you practice. So my hand closest to the throat of the machine has the strongest grip on the quilt right now. Now the hand farther away has the strongest grip, the strength hand towards the throat. So whatever hand has the strongest grip, you'll be able to move the other hand if needed and hopefully not have too much movement in your quilt. Now I'm, try I'm really exaggerating the movements of my hands right now. I usually don't pick them up and move them that heavily it's usually just a few fingers move in but I'm trying to just show you how because the other hand has more of a grip on the quilt you can kind of move your hand that you need to pretty easily without fumbling anything so hopefully you understood what I was saying with how I move my hands around now. I really found this so helpful when it kind of clicked in my head and I hope I was able to explain it to help you in some way. When I first started free motion quilting, my hands were just a fumbling mess everywhere. I would try to move both at the same time because I would kind of panic and, and be getting too close to the needle or too far away and everything would just turn into a mess because nothing was really holding the quilt in place. So hopefully I helped you out a little bit with this tip and all of the others. Now if you really enjoy free motion quilting and have some good tips to add, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. If you have any questions or have gotten started on free motion quilting, I can try to answer those as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.